back. And we'll see some unusual faces. Okay, ten, presto. Long train. Oh, broken. Good. We'll search for the world's best donut. Cut out. Oh, there we go. And a quick splash. And we'll see the adventures of Dave. Oh, good boy. And cut it out again. Ah, looks good. It's out of control. And now, here's the guy who is always one step ahead of himself. The guy who's in front of his own behind, Dave Coulier. Hi, welcome to another great show. I heard some great jokes I'd like to pass along to you. How far can a dog run into the woods? Halfway. After that, he's running out. <laughs> a tough audience here today. Hey, is this the kookiest face you've ever seen? <laughs> Dave, I thought you were funny. Well, I never thought Dave was funny. Wait a minute, you never thought I was funny? Hey, where are you taking me? Yeah, well, I never thought you were too funny either, Buster. I'll just put you in my pocket just like that. Dave, I found the problem. The laugh machine. Uh, the laugh machine? Yeah. The thing that laughs at all your jokes? Well, what's the problem? Here. He's the problem. Uh, who are you? I am Lem Blank. I run the laugh machine. Well, is there something wrong with the laugh machine? No. There's something wrong with me. I don't think anything's funny anymore. I've lost my sense of humor. Ooh! Ooh! I'll find it! Don't worry, Dave. Now, sir, where did you last laugh? Look, while we try and figure out this whole laugh situation, why don't you take a look at this next story? It's one of my favorite Let's Eat segments, so we'll figure this out, don't worry. Mmm, donuts, donuts, donuts. Don't you love donuts? Mm hmm I love donuts. Look at this, peanut butter and jelly donuts, peanut butter and apple, cherry, blueberry, strawberry, all kinds of donuts. We're here at Stan's Corner Donut Shop in Westwood, California. Let's go back and see how they make them. Come on. Hi, Stan. Hi, Dave. How you doing? I'm doing fine this morning. Oh, great. So you're making some donuts here. We're about to get started on the glazed donuts and jellies. Okay. And now we'll cut them out. The dough cutter. Would you like to stamp one out there? Sure, go sure. Ahead, I'll stamp Dave. one. Here we go. Stamp a couple. There you go. Perfect. I've never done this before either. Look at that. I pretty much covered it. I've always been a donut. Cut it out. Come on now. <laughs> I'm going to be a donut. <laughs> what are these called, Stan? These are called, we call them apple fruits. Apple fritters? It's like a pocket with apples in it. Mm -hmm. So it's a pocket donut? It's a pocket donut. I see what you mean. Uh-huh. Well, Stan, these donuts were great. And on behalf of Out of Control, we'd like to present to you this Let's Eat Award for having the world's best donuts. Thank you, Dave. My Man, pleasure. Have you ever thought about having different kinds of donuts? Like, I don't know, uh, mustard donuts. You know, you just kind of just, uh, sushi donuts, chicken donuts, ham and cheese donuts. You're walking on the fighting side of me. Oh, yeah? Says who? Me. That's who. Yeah? Yeah. Are you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Lem, why don't you show us how the laugh machine works? Well, I just look through here at the show. Mm -hmm. And if I see something funny, I... Press this button. And if I see something funnier, I press this. And if I see something really funny, I press this. <laughs> I can't do it anymore. Nothing's funny. I've seen too much. I can never touch these buttons again. Hmm. 
But we have to cheer you up. Uh, I got just the thing. Here, watch. Sorry, Dave. I've seen all that a million times. I have an idea. Sometimes when a whole group of people get together and start laughing, it's real contagious. We just happen to have a stadium over here with thousands of people behind us today. Jimmy, I'm going to come over there and sit on you. So why don't we get the whole crew and the cast in here just to come on out and help start laughing. Okay? Come on out, everybody. Okay, now we've got to help this guy out. We've got to give him some good laughs to get him cheered up, all right? Ready? <laughs> listening to laughter like that every day for years. Well, our next story has to have a laugh track. I just can't do it, Dave. I'm sorry. I know. Let me do it, Dave. Here, move over, Sonny. Move over. After all, I am the stage manager. All right. Go for it, Diz. You better do a good job, Diz. It's my story. Here's our very own ace reporter, Hearn Burford, with a story on... Kitty litter? Have you been buying enough kitty litter lately? Well, if you haven't, it's probably because you haven't realized all the things you can do with kitty litter, even if you don't have a kitty. You can toss it at a wedding instead of rice. You can clean up spills with it. You can put it in the fridge to keep it odor-free. <laughs> you can guess how many grains are in a jar and win valuable prizes. You can drive your truck through it to give it traction. You can roll cheese in it to create delicious cheese logs. Yum, 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 yum. You can put it and wear it instead of deodorant. Put it in your shoes to use as odor eaters. Build sand castles out of it and much, much more. So order your kitty litter today from me. Hey, what's going on? What's going on around here? Uh, order from me, Hearn Burford, care of this station, California 90909090909. What's going on? This, this. Hmm, now that's what I call kitty litter. Hey, Diz, that was pretty good work on that laugh track, but it sounds like your pig is out of tune. Well, it's too hard to control, Dave. I'll say it is, Diz. You ruined my story. Let me give it a go, Dave. These are the hands of a surgeon. You know, cut it out. Well, why don't you give it a try on this next story, then? Well, go ahead, Mr. Smarty Pants. <laughs> you know, Dave, I flew one of these babies in World War II. Hearn, what's the matter with the machine? Uh, I don't know. It's it's out of control. Well, that's the name of the show. No, 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 the machine. It's out of the... Oh, what the heck? Well, here comes the next story, ready or not. And it's probably true. I guess so. Gee, I don't know. What do you think? Could be. Mm, possibly. Maybe. Yeah, yeah it's, it's probably, probably true. true. Hi, we're here at a comic book convention. They're held all the time all over the United States. And what it is, it's a place where people can come and buy and trade and sell rare comic books. And we're here today with a collector, Mr. Bob Borden. Hi, Bob. Hi, Dave. How are you doing? Fine, thanks. Good. you got quite a, quite a display here. Uh, what can you tell us about some of your magazines? Uh, well, one of the more interesting ones I have is this copy of Superman. Superman. And this is, what year was this? Uh, this is from 1944. 1944. Originally sold for 10 cents. And now we see that the value has gone up to 300 bucks. That's correct. Not a bad investment since uh, its value has increased to about 300,000%, yeah. would you say? Not bad at all. Bob, how many magazines do you have all together? Well, in my personal collection, I have somewhere between 18 and 20,000. And for the store itself, we have almost half a million comics. Almost half a million. We're here with John Ramita. John is an artist, and uh, he illustrates a lot of different comic book characters. John, what are some of the characters you've worked on? Uh, I just recently finished doing Spider-Man, my mm -hmm. favorite. I'm doing the X-Men Now, which is the top-selling comic we have. And I did Iron Man. The very first thing I did for the company was Iron Man. Tell us how you, how, what the process involves. Well, after I'm given a script for the writer, uh, I put the words down in art form, on pencil, my pencil the artwork. Okay. And I'm more or less the director uh, in a movie, only in the comic book form. Then we go to the color? No, we go to the inker. The inker. Who you little inker, you. <laughs> who inks it in this manner. Oh, okay. In the ink. This would be? 
and that's the color form. And then that's printed, and it's on stands. John, thanks for showing us how comic books are made. This has certainly been very interesting. And you think maybe someday I could get my own comic strip, like maybe The Adventures of Dave or something? Uh, no. I was just checking. <laughs> It was a calm day in TV land. I was working the out-of-control division. I'm a TV host. Everything was running smooth as usual. Suddenly, I got a call. Oh, yeah. Hello there. The animator had gone berserk. Hey, wait a minute. You can't do this to me on TV. Hey! It seemed as though his brush had dipped into the wrong color. I knew it was a job for... Super Dave! Stop that in the name of the draw. Oh, ah, oh, 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 ah. Okay, all right, I'll be good. Um, okay. So, once again, animation was back to Whoa. normal. Only time will tell in another episode of Super Dave! Out of control. We'll be back after these messages. Simulate your tickle nerve. What? <laughs> well, it, it does have a few bugs left in it, but basically it works pretty good. Give it a try. Hey, this is great. Lem, now this machine's gonna help you start to laugh again. I hope so. I really hope so. Oh, oh, go. <laughs> oh, my. Well, we've got another story to do and no one to run our laugh machine. Waldo, you're our technical expert. You run the laugh machine. And we're going to take a look at this next story. Guaranteed to make you laugh. favorite sport of good fellowship, a sport you can play on a rainy day. And best of all, it's the only sport you can play while eating. First, you must select the right ball. Make sure you choose a ball that is the right size. And the right weight. Before you begin the game, you must know how to keep score. It's simple, really. If you knock down eight pins on your first ball, and one pin on the second, you score a nine. If you knock down eight pins on the first ball, and two on the second, that's a fair. So you add half total to the first ball, and the next thing, you must be super fair. See? Nothing to it. Now you're ready to approach the line. Center your weight, and line up on the dots. Now, aim the ball at the arrows down the lane and... Wait a minute! A courteous bowler always waits for the bowler on his right to finish. Ah, that's better. Now, you may want to use the long five-step approach. Or the short three-step. The tippy-toe. Or the freestyle. Aim for the pocket. Bring your arm back and... Oops, don't forget to let go of the ball. When all the pins are knocked down, it's called a strike. When some of the pins are knocked down, it's called a spare. And when none of the pins are knocked down, it's called a gutter ball. Because the ball and your spirits are both in the gutter. Just remember, release the ball smoothly with 
one graceful motion. Oh, a split. Let's try once more. Very good. Now you've got it. Of course, the courteous bowler only bowls on his own lane. Ha! Bowling is stupid. You wouldn't catch me on a bowling alley. Ha! You missed me. Whoa! Ha, look, we need your help. You see, Lem here runs the laugh track machine for out of control, and, well, he's heard everything, and, well, he doesn't think anything is funny anymore. So, can you come up with some really new jokes for him? Well, what did Beethoven say to Bach? Boy, am I baroque. <laughs> That's pretty good. Only I heard a joke just like it when I was first in this business 25 years ago. He's right, Dave. There is no new humor. Just new ways of telling old jokes. Hmm. Well, have you ever seen anybody do this before? <laughs> well, has anybody got a better idea? Maybe I could just take over the laugh track. We're both machines. We might work well together. Hey, it's worth a try. Hey, this next story is mine, so, ha-ha, I really hope you like it. Yeah, yuck it up, ha-ha. <laughs> oh, Fern. Yeah, ha-ha. Sorry, that had to happen. Very funny, ha-ha. A lot of people have been writing in to ask what Dave would look like with Fern's hat, Waldo's eyes, and Diz's clothes. Well, it would look something like this. <laughs> Isn't that great? Hey, this is so Excellent. much fun. We should play a whole game like this yeah. with up faces. Yeah. Come on over here, you guys. Come on, guys. Okay, now the object of the game is to just guess whose little parts of the faces they are, okay? Ready for the first one? There you go. Oh, I know, I know. That's Dave's hair, my beautiful eyes, Wallow Jays, and Hearn's body. Very good, Jim. <laughs> Okay, now you guys get into the game here. Ready? And here's the next one. Oh, I know that. That's Hearn's hat, mm, Angela's eyes, Dave's mouth, and my beautiful body. Excellent, Diz. All right, now ready? And the next one. Oh, oh, I know. Diz. Angela's hair, my eyes, Waldo's mouth, and Dave's body. Sensational, Diz. You're brilliant. Wait, Diz, how do you know all this? Hmm, I'm just smart, I guess. I know that one, too. It's Dave's hair, Angela's eyes, my mouth, and Dave's body. Oh, superb, Diz. Come on, you guys, get in the game. Waldo, put some glasses on. Are we ready for the next one? And ta-da. Uh, uh, don't tell me, don't tell me. It's my beautiful hair. Hearn's eyes, Angela's mouth, and Waldo's body. Sensational! Oh, fabulous! I'm killing myself. Diz, who'd you pay for all these answers? <gasps> Her. She just happens to be brilliant. Let's go on to the next. Thanks. Who's got um, it? I, Come I, on, I you know, guys. I know um, exactly who that um, is. Um, my, um, oh, that's um, well, it's a cute guy. It's some oh. guy I love and wants yeah. to marry me, I'm sure. It's, um... I know who it is. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hey, Wally, don't you be here. Hey, 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 it's a really cute guy and a uh, scary girl. Uh, um, I, know, I know exactly who that is. Well, who are they, Dave? They're Dave's relatives. <laughs> well, how was I supposed to know that? Funny, I'd recognize them anywhere. Oh, oh Dave. Dave! Why, you! Great game, let's play again. <laughs> I can't do this, Dave. I can't write jokes and laugh at them at the same time. I'm overloading my circuit. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Well, we gotta get this guy cheered up, though. Why can't I tell him one of my stories? Everybody thinks my stories are funny. Okay, Diz, you tell your story, and Lem and everybody out there, you watch Diz's story, and I'm gonna try and run this laugh machine.
a time back in the olden days when giant dinosaurs were still roaming around the world and there was no such thing as psycho blue fingernail polish. Yikes, good thing I wasn't living back then, eh, gang? What would a cover girl like me do? In a country named Italy, that's where all the spaghetti in all the whole wide world comes from, there lived a poor little puppet maker named Geppetto who didn't have any children. Oh, I wish I had a little son. And with that, the sun came shining through the window. No, 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 Manage America, not that kind of son. A boy, a kid, someone I can play stickball with. Later, that very same night, a beautiful fairy princess named Gina Lola Wooda Brigida came in and almost, almost made Pinocchio a real boy. The only thing he could not do was steal, cheat, or lie, because if he lied, your nose, she's gonna grow and grow and grow, and you're gonna be able to hang your laundry on your face. <gasps> One day, when Pinocchio was at school, these kids started picking on him. I guess you could call them woodpickers. <laughs> Sometimes I really kill myself, gang. Anyway, these kids started knocking around saying, Hey, Pinocchio, we're going to use you as a good luck charm. Hey, knock on wood, knock on wood, Pinocchio, knock on wood. <laughs> and Pinocchio said, Wait a minute, wait a minute. If you'll be very nice to me, um, my father, he owns MTV, and I'll have him put you on as a guest DJ. Oh, sure, Pinocchio. And with that, Pinocchio's nose grew three inches long. Then they started knocking him around again and again. Hey, Pinocchio, wait a minute, wait a minute. If you guys be very nice to me. Um, um, my mother, she owns a famous designer jean company, and I'll have her take the little swan off the designer jeans and have her put your face on it and said, Oh, sure, Pinocchio. And with that, Pinocchio's nose grew nine inches long. Yep. And they started knocking around again and again. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This time, I really mean it. Um, if you guys be very nice to me, um, my brothers are in a famous rock and roll band, and I'll have them get you backstage passes to see their group and everything. And the name of their group is called Sticks. Oh, sure, Pinocchio. And with that, Pinocchio's nose grew 12 inches long. And everybody knows that 12 inches equals one foot, so now his nose was a foot. Yikes, stripes! And everybody ran away screaming, ah! Okay, I got one for you. What's a six-letter word for this show? S-T-U-P-I-D, that's what. <laughs> hey, I thought that was really funny. I thought <laughs> so. I almost laughed three times. Uh, I'll never think anything funny ever again. <laughs> oh, I can't run this. Somebody's got to host the show. But I know if I could get you to laugh just one time, that you'd feel a lot better. Dave, Dave, I've got this really fantastic story. Not now, Hearn. But it's a great story. It's a story about, uh, about a tropical island. Let me do the story, Dave. They got beautiful women there, and birds that fly upside down. They have trees that talk and rocks that walk. What's so funny? What are you guys laughing at? This one's got so big. It's so funny. It just got bigger and bigger. I always thought noses were funny. Thanks, Hearn. Thanks a lot. You really saved the day. Well, are you going to send me or what? I mean, they got people down there that talk with their ears. <laughs> I feel great. I haven't lost my sense of humor after all. <gasps> I'm ready to work. <laughs> uh, how's, this, how's this for a pookie face? <laughs> How about this one? <laughs> How, how about Hearn's face? <laughs> hey, how about if I play along with you on this? Sure. Okay. Well, that's all the time we have this week. Tune in next week when we go to Tonganoxy, Kansas to see Tad Turner tame a twister in his mother's kitchen. And then he serves up a recipe for linguine with giant clam sauce that will end life as we know it. So, see you next time. <laughs>